So GP203 released a couple of weeks ago and I thought that I might as well do the same treatment as I did with GP202 and do a set breakdown. So in GP203 we got a few clans that were supported, including Link Choker, Shadow Paladin, Gold Paladin, Murakumo, Dark Irregulars, and Kagero, as well as a couple of Cray Elemental cards. To start off, I'll be talking about the Cray Elementals. So we got two of those, one is a Grade 2 called Earth Elemental Pokur, and his skill is Soul Blast 1, when he's called, if you have a Cray Elemental in your G-Zone that is face up, you can unlock one of your locked cards. This is nice because it gives every deck a possibility to have unlockers, unlock just a, unlike just a few clans that used to have it back in BT14 days. So, but I don't really see many clans using this. Like if Vanguard had a side deck, then yes, this would definitely be used, but otherwise I don't see it very main deckable. The other Cray Elemental we got is Air Elemental Fuarlun, and this card skill is a grade 1 with 7k. During your turn, this thing gets power plus 1000 for each Cray Elemental in your G-Zone. So it doesn't have to be face up, just as many Cray Elementals as you have in your G-Zone, that's how much plus one it's going to get. I have a feeling eventually by the end of G we're going to be able to make a full on Cray Elemental deck. Because we already have three different grade ones, give us one more and we're going to be set to go. Moving on, I'll be talking about the, one of the clans that got the least amount of support from GB203, which is Kagero. Their one and only triple rare is Divine Dragon Knight Mustafa, which is a stride. And its skill is once per turn you can count on us one and choose a face down card from your G-Zone and turn it face up. So this can be any card in your G-Zone. And then you choose one of your opponent's rear guards and retire it. And then you choose one of your units. For each face up card named Divine Dragonite Mustafa in your G-Zone, you can give that unit a skill that when their attack hits you can choose a card from your damage zone and turn it face up. So basically it can potentially be a free retire. But I don't see how this is better than Root Flare, so I don't know. The only double rare that Kagero got is Dragon Knight Janat, which is the same as all the other double rare criticals, except this one is restricted to just Dragonic Blade Master. We got an interesting rare Grade 3, which has a GB1 skill that when this unit attacks a Vanguard, your opponent chooses one of his or her rear guards and retires, and they may retire it. If they do not retire one rear guard, then this unit gets a critical plus one, and then. If your opponent only guards with one card, then you can retire that guardian, and even if it's a perfect shield. So basically, you force your opponent to retire a card, otherwise if they only guard like with a 10k shield, then it's not gonna work. So it's, it's pressure, it's nice pressure, but I don't see it being that great. And as its second skill is combat 1, soul bus 1, and then when you ride this vanguard, then you can choose one of your opponent's grade 1 or less rear guards and retire it. It's an okay card, for a budget Kagero deck, this card is amazing, but I don't see it being too good in anything else other than budget. They also got a grade 2 in Dragon Knight Imad, who does a similar thing. It's quite similar to the grade 3 as well, so I don't think it's that worth talking about. They got a slightly interesting common grade 2 in Demonic Dragon Berserker Putana. Putana! Generation grade 1, Canvas 1, retire this unit. When this unit's attack hits, you may pay the cost, and then you can choose up to two of your rearguards and of your opponent's rearguards and retire them. So it's kind of nice, it's sort of a trade, because you have to counterbalance one and retire him in order to retire other two. So it's kind of nice, but I don't think you, like, you have a lot of other things that can already do stuff like that and better. Apart from that, there's not that much other amazing Kagero support, apart from two Seal Dragon cards, which is very undeserved, because I think Seal Dragon should get a lot more support, as it's the one Kagero deck that everybody likes playing and is just not getting enough support. First off, they got a critical which says when you call it, if you have Vanguard with Seal Dragon in his card name, you can choose a card from your damage zone for each of your opponent's grade 2 units and turn them face up. So if they have two grade 2s, you unflip flip two, if they have three grade 2s, then you unflip three and so on. That's the main thing that Seal Dragons do, they just kind of make your opponent have a lot of grade 2s or nothing. So it is kind of nice, but it's not too amazing. And then they also got a grade 1 in Seal Dragon Gary Surge. And basically his skill is when he boosts, you can if you have a Vanguard with Seal Dragon in his card name, you can count bus 1. And then until end of battle or your opponent's units cannot intercept and the boosted unit gets boosted unit gets plus 2000 power for each of your opponent's grade 2 units. It's all right, but I feel that considering the Seal Dragons are are an archetype that everybody wants support for, I think they deserve a lot better. Dark Regulars got some well-deserved support, and they really were quite well off with Amon being a really, really good deck. Well, it was a right deck, but now it's a really, really good deck, as they got a lot of nice stuff, including two new strides. The first one of which is a triple rare, which is Abominable One, Gilles de Ré, or Gilles, yeah, I believe that's how you should pronounce it. And yes, it's a stride, and it's a Persona stride, for no cost, just apart from Persona striding, and it's once per turn. 
And then if the number of cards in your soul is 10 or more, this unit gets plus 10,000 power until end of turn. Then, if the number of cards in your soul is 15 or more, until end of turn, this unit gets... When this unit attacks a vanguard, until end of that battle, your opponent cannot call grade 1 or greater cards from hand to guardian circle. So basically, it's a glory effect that attacks for huge numbers, because it already gets plus... it's 26, plus the 10 that it gets from having 15 soul or more, and from 10 or more soul, sorry. And then on top of that, you have stuff like Doreen's that can push that attack even higher, and then on top of that, the skill's not over yet. If the number of face-up cards in your G-Zone is 2 or more, this unit gets a critical as well. So this attacks for huge numbers. The 15 soul is not hard, it's just sort of trying to not die and finishing the game there when you stride him the first or second time that you really need to make sure you do. So it is a nice card, it's not a very hard objective to reach the 15 soul, and I only think it's a very nice, very nice stride. The second stride, which is the rare stride, is Love Tempest Kiss Kill Lyra. Her skill is, when this unit's attack hits a vanguard, soul charge 2, and if the number of cards in your soul is 6 or more, draw a card. Easy, you're always gonna have 6 or soul, 6 or more soul, and just from, I don't know, one simple soul charge effect and this hitting, you're already gonna have 6 or soul of 6 or more, letting you to draw the card. So on top of having the Amon Legion and the Promo Legion, there is also a new grade 3, which is a GB2. And the GB2 skill says during your turn, if the number of cards in your soul is 6 or more, this unit gets power plus 10,000. And if the number of cards in your soul is 10 or more, this unit gets critical plus 1. So it's going to be attacking for 21 with a crit on its own, as long as you have 10 or more soul, which is not hard to get in this deck. So that's quite amazing. And the on-stride skill is during your turn, when your G unit strides, you may pay the cost, which is counter plus 1. And then you soul charge 2 and you choose one of your vanguards. And it gets the skill that when the two attacks a vanguard, if the number of cards in your soul is 6 or more, your opponent chooses one of his or her rear guards and retires it. Doesn't have to hit, as soon as it attacks a vanguard. So this is a very nice card, I really do quite like this grade 3, although it does not really beat the Amon Legion in terms of what it can do now. We have one double rare grade 2 in Squallmaker Vampire, it's an Amber clone, so when it's boosted and it attacks a vanguard, you can count plus 1, and then you can Soul Charge 2, and he gets plus 5,000 until end of that battle. It's nice, it's a sort of easy Soul Charge mechanic, because it just count plus 1 when you attack a Vanguard, so it is quite nice. We all know that there is the Promo Legion for Dark Regulars that came as a box topper for GB203, and it was also a promo for one of the sneak peeks in the past. But also there's one that um, uses the same Legion mate, which is Psychic of Storm Rigil, and this is a rare from the set. And basically, count plus 2, when you attacks a vanguard, if he's in legion and the number of cards in your soul is 10 or more, then you choose 2 of your opponent's rear guards and retire them. And then if the number of cards in your soul is 15 or more, choose 1 of your opponent's rear guards and retire it. So you retire 3 rear guards if you have 15 or more soul for count plus 2, which is pretty nice. We got some other supporting cards, like a grade 3 GB1 Doreen, so she's 11k and she looks quite nice. So, but yeah, when the card spins to the soul, this unit gets plus 3,000 until end of turn. Of course, it stacks, just like Doreen, but it's not as good as Doreen is because it is grade 3, but the art is awesome. Some Amon support in Amon's follower Hell's Nail. The skill is count plus one card with Amon in his card name. When this unit attacks a vanguard, you can count plus one, and then if you do, soul charge three. So just when it attacks, you soul charge three. It doesn't even have to be boosted. Really, really nice. And then a grade one is killing Dollmaster. You put this unit into the soul at the beginning of your main phase, and then, but only at the beginning of your main phase. So you have to first call it and then wait until your next main phase, and then you put it into the soul and you soul charge two, effectively soul charging three. Another final piece of the Amon support is Amon's follower Grauzam, which is Kamas one Amon in his card name. When this card is put into your soul due to an effect from one of your cards, if you have a Vanguard with Amon in his card name, if the number of cards in your soul is six or more, you pay that cost. If you do, your opponent chooses one of his or her rear guards and retires it. So basically, when you use a Mon skill to put a card into the soul and retire something, you can use his skill as well to count us another card, and then you can retire yet another card. So this is quite nice. I really like this crit. I think it makes the Amon deck even better than it already is. Moving on to Murokumo. So this clan got quite a bit of a few nice strides from Fighters Collection, and I think both of those strides are really good. But now they got a triple rest, right? In Ambush Demon Stealth Dragon Homura Raider. And this card is the restander for Murakumo. His skill is Counter Rest 2 and choose a face down card named Homura Raider from your G Zone and turn it face up. If the number of face up cards in your G Zone is 2 or more, 
And to the end of this turn, this unit gets drive minus one, so you only drive track two times. And at the end of the battle that this unit attacked the vanguard, choose one of your rear guards. If you do, choose three of your rear guards with the same name as that unit, and you may return them to your deck. If you return three cards, stand this unit, and then shuffle your deck. So basically, at the end of the attack, you choose three units, and then you just return them back to your deck and you shuffle. So this could be like the promo Stealth Fiend Lake Diver, who is a GB1 Karmas 1 when this unit is placed on rear guard circle, you may pay the cost. If you do, search your deck for up to two Stealth Fiend Lake Diver, call them to separate rear guard circles, shuffle your deck, and at the end of the turn, put the units called with this effect on the bottom of your deck. So you just call one, you use a skill to call the other two, and then with Armour Raider, you put all three back, because you would have had to put back two anyway, so you just put down one, put back one, into the bottom of the deck to restand. This is a really nice restander. I think Murkuma really deserved this, along with all the other support that they've been getting. Moving on to their GB2 Grade 3, which is Stealth Rogue of Relevation Yasuye. His, he's a double rare, and his GB2 skill is once per turn. When your rear guard is put into the into your deck due to an effect from one of your cards, search your deck for up to one card with, with the same card name as that card, call it to rear guard circle and shuffle your deck. So when a card would be normally put back to the bottom of the deck, you could instead just call it uh, to the rearguard circle instead of having it be put back. So it's nice against some matchups like Shadows where you, where you need to retire your own stuff against Diablo and stuff like that. So it is a nice little grade 3 and I think it's good in every single Morkumo deck. But the reason why is his on strike skill, which is when uh, something strides on top of it, you can must 1. If you do, choose one of your rear guards, and then search your deck for up to two cards with the same card name as that unit, call them to separate rear guard circles, and shuffle your deck. And then at the end of the turn, you put the units called with its effect on the bottom of the deck. So basically, you can do Homing Your Raider skill just like that. You stride on top of this guy, count on this one, copy a card twice, and then boom. Like, it's such a nice grade 3. I think Yasuya is, should, should be in every Murkumo deck. It's such an amazing card. Moving on to the other double rare grade 3 is Covert Demonic Dragon Magatsu Typhoon. This is the Revival Legion for Magatsu Storm. The reason why you would use this Legion is not for Magatsu Storm. It's more for his on Legion when he's in Legion skill. So, his skill is when this unit Legion, choose up to 5 of your rear guards with Magatsu in its card name and they get power plus 5000 and boost until end of turn. His second skill is once per turn you can discard a card from your hand. Then you search your deck for up to one card with the same name as the unit on your vanguard circle, call it to rear guard circle, shuffle your deck, and at the end of that turn, return the units called with this effect to your hand. So basically, you can copy a Magatsu Typhoon, and then at the end of the turn it's gonna go back to your hand so you can re-legion and do the same skill again. And don't forget, like, I can pull up a picture of me playtesting Murakumo, and look at that field, it's wonderful, it's beautiful. Like, this card is so nice, and I think Morkumo got the support that they really needed. They are such a nice deck now. At first I was surprised at how good Morkumo is, but damn, with this new support, they are amazing. But we're not done just yet. There's another rare stride, which I don't think is as good as the other strides, but it's alright. His skill is when its unit, when its unit's attack hits a vanguard, you choose one of your rearguards and you search your deck for two cards with the same card name as that unit and call them to separate rearguard circles. At, and then you shuffle your deck, and at the end of the turn you put those cards on the bottom of the deck, as with every card. He's okay, but I think he's not as good as the Fighter's Collection Double Rare Stride, and also Shirayuki is also quite good, even in non-Shirayuki decks. Moving on to the support cards from Murakuma, we have a Grade 2, which is Stealth Dragon Runestar. He's an Amber Clone, so GB1 when he's boosted and attacks the Vanguard, you can count as one. You search your deck for up to one Stealth Dragon Runestar, call to your guard circle and shuffle your deck. At the end of the turn, return the unit call with this effect to your hand. That is really nice because it lets you get a free attack, and then it's not a once per turn skill either. Well, not, not like that would matter. The thing is that you can call another rune star on some like an empty grade two slot, and then with that rune star you call another rune star, and they're gonna go back to your hand anyway. So and also there's the stride that lets you attack from the back row. So you can call like a rune star behind your vanguard and attack from there and it's just gonna go back to your hand so it's not like it's taking up a space. So rune star is a really nice card, I really like it. It's probably one of my favorite grade 2s from Murakuma. We got another grade 2 that I don't think is that useful which is Stealth Rogue of the Flowered Hat Fujino. Her skill is when another of this card is placed on rearguard circle and the land of turn this unit gets power plus 2000 and when the attack hits a vanguard and flip one. So. 
I don't like on hit on flips, and this is just another incarnation of them. You do get the plus 2k, but it's not that important. I don't think this grade 2 is that good. You have a lot of better grade 2s that you could be running instead. Like in this deck, you can easily run the new 12k attacker, the, the Tenjuku Stealth Rogue Dokube. He's a GB1 12k attacker. And also, you have Stealth Beast Emissary Crow, which is a defensive option. It's only 8k base though, and it's a grade 2. And as GB1 skill says, when this unit intercepts, you search your deck for up to 3 Stealth Beast Emissary Crow, call them to Guardian Circle as a rest, shuffle your deck until, until end of that battle phase. This unit get, when this unit is put into the drop zone from Guardian Circle, put this card on the bottom of your deck. So basically, you're always going to be able to use them, and it's just, it's a nice defensive option. I quite like it, but I think, again, your grade 2 space is quite tight, so there's no real room for this unless you really want to go Shirayuki defensive. Moving on to the MVP starter, it's called Chain Sickle Stealth Rogue Onifundo, and his skill is a GB1. At the beginning of your main phase, you can count plus one and return this card. You can soul blast one, sorry, and return this unit to your hand. If you do, you look at top three cards of the deck. You search for one card among them and call it to rearguard circle. And at the end of that turn, put the unit called with this effect on the bottom of your deck. This can be used for fixing columns. It's a nice little. I don't know, the little top 3 card skill is quite nice. Like, I think that if you're gonna be... I don't know, if you need a 10k shield or something, like, to get your starter back, you can use this. But through my playtesting, I didn't find too many cases in where I would use a skill. But I'm pretty sure there are some that the Morkuma players can call me out on, so there you go. And the final piece of Morkuma support that I quite like is their new stand trigger, Stealth Dragon Hidden Scroll. Or Hidden Scroll, because there's no double D. <laughs> His skill is GB1. When this unit is placed on rearguard circle, you can put this card on the top of your deck. If you do, choose one of your rearguards not named this card, and then you search your deck for the two cards with the same name as that unit, call them to separate rearguard circles, shuffle your deck, and then the other this turn, put these units called with this effect on the bottom of your deck in any order. So basically, you call him, you choose one of your rearguards that you want to copy, you copy two of them, and you put this, and this stand trigger goes back to your deck. It's nice. I love how stand triggers right now in G always have amazing skills, just like this one. Moving on to the big three, starting off with Gold Paladin. They got quite a bit of support, but I'm gonna kind of simmer it down to the most important cards that I see are worth talking about. First off is their Triple Race Stride, Golden Dragon, Spear Cross Dragon. His skill is, Crown Mass 2 and choose this card in turn to face up. When this unit is, is called, placed on Vanguard Circle. If the number of face up cards in your G zone is one or more, you may pay the cost. If you do, look at five cards from the top of your deck, search your deck for up to one Search for up to one card from among them for each face-up card you have in your G-Zone, call them to separate open rearguard circles and shuffle your deck. So if you have five open G-Units, then you call all five, but otherwise I don't find this that amazing. This is Candle Blast 2, and I don't know, I feel it's it's lacking. The Candle Blast 2 is the biggest hindrance, like for Triple Air Stride, I would expect a bit more. It's nothing compared to Campbell, which is their other stride, which is just on hit, look at top five, and then Superior Call 1 gets plus 2k. That's much better. It doesn't cast anything, just has to, just have to hit the Vanguard. They did get a new grade 3 in Sunrise Ray Knight, Gurgrit, or Gurjui. And basically he is the, the leader of the Golden Sun Paladins, and the defensive Paladins, let's say. First off is GB2, is Kalmas 1, Solbas 1. At the beginning, beginning of the guard step of the battle, this, this unit is attacked. You may pay the cost. If you do, look at four cards from the top of your deck, search your deck for up to search for up to one card from among them, call it to Guardian Circle at rest, and shuffle your deck. So it lets you get free guardians for Count Bus 1, Soul Bus 1. So sure, this is kind of extensive, but I mean it is quite nice. What if you get a perfect guard that is not a G perfect guard? Don't forget, G perfect guards have to be called from hand. So if you play this guy, play non-G perfect guards, like please. And basically, his other skill is when you stride on top of him, you count blast one. If you do look at top four, and then search your card, search for one card from among them, call it the regard circle, shuffle your deck, and that unit gets plus two k. It's pretty nice. It just top four calls something for count blast one. It's like an aglo veil, I would say, except plus one card. Some support cards are the amber clone. So GB one when it attacks the vanguard and it's boosted, you can count blast one. Look at top three cards, search your deck for up to one among them and call it to rearguard circle and shuffle your deck. This is nice because Pelinor can come back. So let's say you're done attacking with your vanguard, then you attack with Quill and use the skill to get top three. Oh, a Pelinor, let me attack again with my vanguard. 
then you have another Quill, and oh look, another Pelinar. Oh, let me attack with yet another Pelinar. So, you know, it can give you multiple Vanguard attacks, which is quite nice. And you can combo, like, hit with Campbell, get, get a Pelinar, and then attack with Quill, get a Pelinar, attack with the other Quill, get a Pelinar, you know. You can do that kind of stuff, so that's why Pelinar's price sort of jumped up, so... I just like this deck for its Pelinor plays because I really, like, I feel nostalgic thinking about Pelinor, so it is pretty cool. Bluish Flames got a little bit of support, but not too much. There is a Liberator Grey 2 in Tacky Turn Liberator Brenius. His skill is, when another unit is placed on Rearguard Circle from your deck, if you have a Vanguard with Liberator in its card name, until end of turn, this unit gets plus 2k, and when this unit attacks, hits a Vanguard, choose a card from your damage zone and turn it face up. It's nice, but I'm not sure if it's worth replacing Lawful Trumpeter for this guy. Like, sure, they can use the Unflippers, but it is an on-hit Unflipper, which is not as promising as some of the other cards in Bluish Flames. And they also got a Critical Trigger in Ascendant Liberator Barb Truck. His skill is, when this unit is placed on Rearguard Circle from your deck, you can put this unit on the bottom of your deck. If you do, look at top four cards from the top of your deck, Search for up to one card with Blue's Flame and its card name from among them, reveal it to your opponent and put it into your hand and shuffle your deck. It's basically like the Grade 2 Aglavale, which is quite nice, because this time you don't need to Soul Blast or Counter Blast, you just put it on the bottom of your deck, and then you're going to shuffle it anyway, so it's not like you're slimming down the chances of you checking a crit. So it is quite nice, it's just nice Blue's Flame support, they could always use triggers. Like, all their triggers didn't have any skills, so why might as well have this. Some in Interesting supporting cards for Sunshine Liberators. We have Bragel, which is a grade 2, and its skill is kind of as 1. When this unit intercepts, you can call, basically you may pay the cost, and if you do, call 2 cards from the top of your deck to Guardian Circle as rest. It's quite nice. You intercept with it, you can almost 1, and you get 2 free Guardians. It saves your hand, and it's quite nice, but of course, your deck is going to go full on defensive. Like, the new Gold Paladins are full on defensive. Another grade 1 is Butterfly Liberated Corderia. Its skill is Count Us 1 and Retire this unit. If you have a Vanguard with Liberator in its card name, look at 3 cards from the top of your deck, search, your, search for up to 1 card with Liberator in its card name from among them, call to open Rearguard Circle and put the rest of the cards into your drop zone. This is nice also for... This is for any Liberators, but it's also nice for Bluish Flames because you can call something and the other 2 cards go to your drop, which accelerates your Legion. So. I mean, why not? It's it's good for your Legion, so you might as well try it out, right? Although Space and Liberators is quite tight, I can tell from having played the deck for a long time. And the final card that I'm going to be talking about for uh, for Liberate for Gold Paladin, sorry, is Slay Me, which is a Grade One GB One. At the bidding, beginning of the guard step of the battle that your Vanguard was attacked, if the number of your rear other the other rear guards is three or more, you may pay the cost, which is retire this unit. If you do, look at three cards from the top of your deck, search for up to one card from among them, call to Guardian Circle as rest, and shuffle your deck. So it's yet another nice little guard mechanic that Gold Paladins got, but this time it's retired this unit just to get another Guardian. So it's sort of like trading, like what if you... Like the thing is this already has 5k shield, but it is at the beginning of the guard step, so I don't know. It's, it's, it's an okay card, but I don't feel it's that great. I think the grade 2 is a bit better. Moving on to the money clans, starting off with Link Joker, we have Genesis Dragon Amnesty Messiah. The main stride for Messiahs, the $50 stride for Messiahs, luckily you need maximum 2, so it's not the biggest deal. Anyway, his skill is that when this unit attacks a vanguard, you can count on us 1. If you do, choose any number of locked cards, so it can be 1, it can be 3, it can be 10, uh, including your opponents by the way. You unlock them. And this unit gets power plus 3000 for each unlocked unit until the end of that battle. Then, if the number of units unlocked is 3 or more, this unit gets critical plus 1. It's nice, but I don't see why you are $50. Like, there are some plays you can make with this, and well, a lot of plays that you can make with this, but... Yeah, okay, it's the main Messiah stride, but goddamn, $50. <laughs> Moving on to Link Joker stride that I personally think is a lot better is Big Crunch Dragon. So... His skill is Kalmas 1, and you choose one of this card from your G-Zone and turn to face up. If the number of face-up cards in your G-Zone is 2 or more, you choose one of your opponent's rear guards, lock all of your opponent's rear guards in the same column as that unit, and those cards cannot be unlocked during his or her next end phase. Basically, 
You can almost one, you persona, and you omega lock a whole column. This is really effective. I have played against this quite a few times and it's very, very effective, even against stuff like shadows, although shadows have ways to obviously overcome it. But a lot of decks get shut down by this because getting Omega Locked for a whole column is quite painful. So I think Big Crunch Dragon is honestly the MVP stride for Link Jokers. The leaders got a little piece of support, and by that I mean literally like one nice card, which is Mixed Deleter Chaos. His skill is when you ride him, you can count us two deleters and discard two cards from your hand. If you do, you delete your opponent's vanguard and you choose up to two of your opponent's rearguards and lock them. I don't know. It's two, count us two, which is already a lot. Like, it's not that much, but for the leaders it's a lot. And then you also discard two, it's hurt, which hurts so much, just for a delete, which can be overcome by striding. Like, if you stride, it's gonna be like nothing. And then on top of that, like, yeah, you lock two cards, but you don't Omega lock them. They can wait one turn. Sure, okay, their front row might be gone, but a smart player won't even call stuff against the deleter if they know they're gonna be running Chaos. Although, to be fair, I guess against the deleter you're not gonna hold back that much, but still, come on, like, the leaders need so much more than this. This is no, no. Some Messiah players don't know exactly what backup grade 3 to play, so some of them choose this rare, which is Cradle of the Stars, Stellar Maker. His skill is, first off, when you ride him, you can count bus 1 and soul bus 1. If you do, choose when your opponent's rear guards in the back row and lock it. It's alright, count bus 1, soul bus 1 to lock is not that bad. And then his GB1 is when this unit attacks a vanguard, you may choose up to two locked cards and unlock them. If two cards were unlocked, this unit gets power plus 3000, critical plus 1 until end of that battle. It's quite nice, I mean it's good for messiahs, you, but you could be running other stuff like Garnet Star. But otherwise, I I don't know, I quite, I think it's quite alright. If you're gonna make a budget, budget um, messiah deck, why not play this? Get two trial decks and a few of these and some other support cards and you're good. One of the really good rares for messiahs, which has a really nice flavor text, just yeah, is Lady Battler of the Gravity Well. Her skill is GB1. Choose one of your other rear guards and lock it. This unit gets power plus 4000 until end of turn. It's sadly it's not a um, an on attack skill, it's just main phase skill. So you attack and you lock something. So you cannot like attack with something, then attack with her and unlock it. That doesn't work, you have to do this in the main phase. So, but it is quite nice because it sets off a lot of the plays. A, lo a lot of the messiah cards don't look that great on their own, but then when you look into the combos, they're a lot better. One of my favorite support cards is Heavy Material, Material Dragon. It's a great 2, which only has 8k sadly, but his skill is a generation break one. Count almost one and choose a card from your hand and discard it and then choose one of your other rear guards and lock it. When this unit is called, you can pay that cost and then draw two cards. It's quite nice. I like cards like this. Aqua Force also has one, which is a lot better than this. But still, this is nice. You count almost one, you discard one and you lock one and locking yourself is already not a bad thing because I mean, that's what your deck is based on. And then you just draw two cards. So basically for count almost one and this dropping one you draw two, like, it's basically a Nemain, except it's not 3k. <laughs> Big Boy Glendio's got a couple of support cards, apart from already getting a really nice stride in Fighter's Collection, which is Chain Battle Starvator Technetium, which is a great 2 with 9k. When it attacks, if you have Vanga with a Starvator in its card name, you can choose a Starvator in its card name from your hand and discard it, and then this unit gets power plus 5000, and when he hits a Vanguard, you Soul Charge, soul charge 1 and none flip 1. It's alright, but I think your grade 2 space is already like, you run like what, 5 grade 2s? There's no space for this. But there is a nice card that I personally like, which is Sword Draw Starvator of Orium, which is a grade 1 with 6k. And its skill is, when an attack hits a vanguard during the battle that this unit boosted, if you have a vanguard with Starvator in its card name, look at 5 cards from the top of your deck, search your deck for up to 1 reverse in its card name from among them, reveal it to your opponent, put it into your hand, and put the rest of the cards on the bottom of your deck in any order. So, on hit. You just search, look at top 5 for a reverse. No Kettle Blast, no Soul Blast, nothing. Just if you hit, you can look for a reverse at the top 5. I like it. I think Glendios can always use a bit of nice support. I'm not sure if there's space for this because Glendios decks are already quite tight on space, but it's a nice little addition. Let's talk about the fan favorite, everybody's favorite clan in the game apparently, Shadow Paladin. This, color, this clan got a lot of nice support this set. Although some of it is a bit pricey, and let's not beat around the bush, 
Phantom Blaster Dragon, the GR. If you want to see my reaction to pulling it, you can look in the description or click on the screen. I'll probably have it up somewhere. Anyway, Phantom Blaster Dragon, this guy is a brake ride for Shadow Paladins and it's only available as a GR. When you brake ride, you can Soul Blast 3. If you do, choose your Vanguard and until end of turn, that unit gets plus 10k, just like with any other brake ride. And then they get the skill that when this unit attacks a Vanguard, you can retire 3. If you do, draw 2 cards and then unflip 3. And until end of that battle, your opponent cannot call grade 1 or greater cards from hand to guardian circle. Yeah, this is this this is a good card. This is a very good card, but it's 40 goddamn dollars, although it is going down because it's a lot easier to pull in English than Japanese. But damn, it is a good card with a tremendous cost. The Soul Blast 3 is not a joke. Like seriously, you have to Soul Blast literally anything. You cannot stride aura geysers if you don't have draw triggers in hand. You cannot use random stuff that Soul Blast unless you already have draw triggers in hand. Unless you run stuff like Full Bow that goes in the soul. But I would not because I think there's better cards to run. Like Full Bow is alright, but I think David's a better starter and I'm gonna get onto him later. However, PBD does have a second skill. Which is, when this unit is ridden, you can retire one of your rear guards. And then you search your deck for up to one card with Blaster and its card name, reveal to your opponent, and put it into your hand and shuffle your deck. This is nice. Moving away from Phantom Blaster Dragon and his $50, we have the stride that I personally like a lot, which is Supremacy Black Dragon or a Geyser Dragon. This guy has a cost that is really annoying to use when you do use him, but his skill is when this unit attacks the Vanguard, you can Counter Blast 1, Soul Blast 1, flip this guy face up, and then you retire 2. So it's a lot of stuff. Counter Blast 1, Soul Blast 1, retire 2, and flip this guy face up. If you do, you reveal the top 2 cards from your deck, and this unit gets power plus 5 for each grade 1 or less card revealed with this effect until end of turn, and then the cards that you revealed, you put into your hand. So it's nice, you look at top 2, no matter what they are, you put them into your hand, and if they're grade 1s or less, you get power plus 5. So if you get triggers, then you still get the plus 5, you just don't get the trigger effect. It is nice. It's a counter plus 1, soul plus 1, doesn't, you don't have to have face-up G units, nothing. I really like this as a starting stride for shadows. Like, as a shadow player, I really, really like this stride. I think it's amazing. We did not get a backup stride, because we already got one in the Legend deck. And I feel like I should mention Legend deck, because there's a lot of stuff in there that you need if you want to play shadows correctly. So go ahead and buy one of those. You get your Diablos, you get your... Oh, so much good stuff. Like, the Shadow, the shadow Paladin Legend deck is just amazing. But moving on to the stuff in GPT-03, we have a new Grade 3, which is Supremacy Dragon, Claret Sword Dragon. He's a GB2, whose skill is GB2, choose two rearguards and retire them, and this unit gets plus 10k in a crit until end of turn. It's an X skill, so, you know. And it's also once per turn, so you cannot spam it and get like 80k. Like you can't ride over, break ride over Phantom Blaster and then do the skill 10 times, and then, you know, Grade 0 is only 100k with 10 crits, you know, easy. So, but it is a nice GB2 that does come in handy in some situations. However, I personally like his onstride skill a lot more, which is when you stride, you counter blast one. Then you search your deck for up to one grade one or less card and you call it. And then you shuffle your deck and that unit gets power plus one. And don't forget guys, Shadow Paladin are grade ones of the deck. They have so many grade ones that you can play one ups. You can play one ups like Karen, you can play one ups like Swordbreaker, I think is a one up because you do not have the soul to put up with Swordbreaker that much, at least not in the good builds, in my opinion. So, this is just like on strike toolbox, in my opinion, because so many great ones are good in Shadow Paladin that, like, this card just makes it even better. Revengers got some direct support in two cards, such as Adroat Revenger Tiernon, whose skill is when your Vanguard performs Legion, you can count on us one, and then if you do, you choose one of your Vanguards, and until end of turn, when this unit attacks a vanguard, it gets the skill that when this unit attacks a vanguard, your opponent may choose one of his or her rearguards and retire it. If he or she does not, until the end of that battle, your opponent cannot call cards from hand to guardian circle. This is nice, because you're gonna have to pressure your opponent to retire one, otherwise they won't be guarding your double PBA. However, uh, there's not a lot of space in Shadows, so it's either gonna be this, or Maka or Macart, so you're gonna have to choose wisely. The second truly Revenger card is Tempting Revenger Finnegus, and he is really tempting to put into your deck, as his skill is he's just a limit break remover. Why is this good? Because now our raging form can do things at any damage. And don't forget, guys, 
Raging Form can do his skill twice in one turn now because of Maka, who is an Amber clone that calls Grade Ones. So you know, just uh, yeah, it's 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 gonna hurt now. It's gonna hurt. Moving on to some other cards, we have Scornful Knight Giva or Jiva. Her skill is GB1, the main skill basically. Countless one, choose a card from hand, discarded. When this cold is when this card is called, you pay the cost and draw two cards. It's a Nemain that's 7k and GB1. Personally, I think even though Nemain has 3k, it's better to play her when you're not at GB1. As 7k is still a low number, it's not worth it. Just whatever. I, I don't like her that much. Like, she's alright, She's she has really nice artwork, but skill-wise, not that great. Witches got one card of support, which is Witch of Black Doves. Go win. Go win! During your turn, if you're Vanguard with a Witch and his card name is in Legion, this unit gets the skill. Put this unit on top of your deck. If the number of your opponent's grade 0 rearguards is 2 or more, choose one of your opponent's vanguards and it gets power minus 5000 until end of turn and shuffle your deck. This is not a once per turn skill, so you can do this, you know, as many times as you want. You can just minus your opponent down 100k if you would like to. <laughs> so, I, it's, it's a good crit. I mean, if you get triggers that you can use the skills of, why not put them in your deck? And finally, I really like this starter for Shadow Paladins, Promising Knight David. He is the same as Karen. GB1, when you're retiring something for the cost of an ability, he counts as two units. So when you have to retire two, you can just retire him. I like him as a starter because, like, sometimes you can't search for the Karen. Like, sometimes you just don't get the cards, you don't get the Makas, you don't get the Clarets, you just don't get the stuff that you need to search. And that's when David comes in handy. And he's really good because he makes Aura Geyser just, you know, retire one instead of retire two. So, it's a good card. So this has been my GP23 set breakdown. Tell me guys what you thought, if you think I've missed out on anything. If you play any of the decks I talked about and I've missed out some combos of the new cards that could have been talked about, please do mention them. So other than that, that's pretty much all for me today. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.